So once again, we begin this beautiful season of Lent. Now, for many people, this is a season where they give up a few things, they try to fast, they try to pray a bit more, try to do a few good works. But I suppose the question is, if you've been on this journey for many years now, if you've been doing this to the point where it's become a bit of a routine, has anything changed? If you look back over the last five years or the last 10 years, for all that you've done during Lent, can you see dramatic improvement? Has your style of prayer changed? Has the relationship with God dramatically gone deeper? Or do you feel like you're just still in the same place? This is a short series to go through Lent and hopefully to try and look at Lent a little bit differently. And it's really designed for people who might feel a bit stuck. You see, if you go back to the, I suppose, one of the central stories of Lent, you know, we, we, we talk about 40 days of Lent, symbolizing the 40 years that the Israelites had in the desert, being set free from slavery in Egypt to go to the promised land. For most of that 40 years, they were stuck. It doesn't take 40 years to walk from Egypt to Israel. In fact, Google Maps suggests it takes about 140 hours. The reason they didn't get to the promised land, they didn't get to this beautiful inheritance that God had designed for them, was because they were afraid. You know, they found themselves caught in this middle zone where they, you know, they kind of enjoyed their life back in Egypt. They enjoyed living this sort of hedonistic, sinful lifestyle. They were very much caught up in all the pagan practices of the Egyptians. And as much as they liked the promise of the promised land, it sounds very promising, they were kind of stepping into the unknown. Did they really want to leave this other stuff behind to take hold of something which they'd never seen before? And so the reason they failed to take hold of that promise was fear. And I think... If you are one of the many people, many Catholics who feel stuck, feel like prayer is not going anywhere, you know, after all these years, you still find yourself saying, I'm trying to pray. You're not actually succeeding. You don't really know how to. Maybe this is because all of us are stuck in the desert. Now, this is really what Lent is for. Lent is a time when we consciously acknowledge the fact that we're stuck. And maybe this is where we try to work out how to move forward, to ask the serious questions, do we want to grow? Do we want to get to the destination? Now, this is particularly in relationship with God, but it's also in relation to all your other relationships. You know, your marriage, are you stuck? Your relationship with your children, are you stuck? Where you're growing in your vocation and how you live and serve and minister in the world, are you stuck? And if so, to actually stop and say, well, is this because of fear? You see, sometimes we find that there is a battle going on between our hearts, between what we really want and what we know is good. You know, there's the, the deep desire and then there's the values. I want to be good. I want to be holy. I want to serve God. But actually, really, I just want to be comfortable and live a life of pleasure and take it easy. And this constant tension where we don't really know how to choose one over the other. In a sense, like they say, you've got to choose what you lose. We either leave behind the mediocre life of Egypt in really pursue the promised land. Or we give up the hope of the promise and go back to what we're comfortable with. I think... God is calling us during this time of Lent to really pray for courage, to once again look firmly at the promise he's given you. Now, whether that is the promise of our faith, the hope of the resurrection that lies before us on Easter Sunday, and to really understand what that means. This is not just a vain hope of heaven when we die, but rather a hope of real true intimacy here on earth to live the promised life, to live a life where we, we're not living like exiles or orphans, but we can actually live in the love of God at every moment. 
But the same thing for your marriage, for your family, your relationship with your children. Everyone starts with a great hope, a great sense of promise, but then very quickly they settle for mediocrity. And sometimes that's because we're afraid to actually push through and and maybe leave behind the things that are holding us back. At the end of the book of Revelation, it says that those who are damned, it lists off the murderers, the liars, the thieves, but the, the highest on that list is the cowards. And I often think of that in relationship to this story of the Exodus because it's the cowards who were too afraid to pursue the promised land and take hold of it, to leave behind the familiar comforts and take hold of what was actually given to them by God. So in this time of Lent, let's pray for courage. Let's pray for a real boldness to take the promised land in our faith, in our family, in in our vocation, and really pursue the gift that God has given us.